In this series of videos, we're going to talk about variance analysis. In our first video, we're going to go through an example of direct materials variances. In the second and third videos, we'll go through a more extensive textbook style example of material, labor, and variable overhead variances. But let's get started. So the reason I love variance analysis is because I think any company with any amount of common sense should be doing this in one form or another. The company makes a plan, they set a standard, and then they test how they're performing. And I want to illustrate this by giving an example. I have a friend that opened a burger restaurant. And these aren't the actual numbers from his burger restaurant, but they're not far off. I just rounded everything to be even numbers or, or a little bit more even than his numbers were in reality. But anyway, my friend's name is Bill. Uh, he opened a burger shop. And so as he was planning to open the burger shop, of course, he practiced making burgers, right? And he figured out, okay, this is how much beef I want to put in the burger. This is how much, you know, mayonnaise and whatever else. I want to focus on the beef. But he'd have to worry about this for, for a lot of his other toppings and even for labor and, and as we'll learn for overhead costs as well. But let's focus in on the beef, just one type of direct material that goes into the burger. So he measured it out and he said, look, for him, the perfect burger is going to take 200 grams of direct material, 200 grams, thankfully metric is nice and easy, converts into 0 0.2 kilograms of beef. Uh, beef costs eight bucks a kilogram, well that's what he cost when he was planning, and so with those planning numbers he said to himself, okay, well it's eight bucks a kilogram, it takes 0 0.2 kilograms, each burger is going to cost me $1.60 in beef costs, right? There's going to be labor costs, there's going to be bun costs, there's going to be overhead costs of washing dishes and things like that. All sorts of other costs associated with delivering this burger to his customers, but the beef in the burger he thinks costs him $1.60. That's the plan. And it's sensible to make a plan, right? Most companies will, and it's very sensible that Bill did make a plan. Now he goes through a month of business, and here's what actually happens. So this is where variances come in. They're useless for just planning. Uh, I mean, it, it's nice to have a plan, but where the real value from uh, uh, setting these standards comes in is when you actually compare what really happened to your plan. You compare your actuals to your, and, and I shouldn't say plan, I should call these standards. So these are Bill's standards for making a burger, and down below, these are Bill's actuals. So here's what actually happened. Bill, in the next month, sold 400 burgers. During the month, he purchased 90 kilograms of beef. Uh, it cost him 765 bucks, $8.50 a kilogram, and he had an ending inventory of two kilograms of beef. So Bill's got to say to himself, did I have a good month or not? Was I efficient or not? And how might Bill know? Well, there's obviously a way for that, and that would be to do his direct materials variances. And so that's the focus of our video here. Uh, again, labor and overhead will be covered in the subsequent couple of videos. So direct materials variances. Uh, to do variances, you'll notice in your textbook there's probably a few different ways presented, equations, and I like to do it in a chart like this. So I draw two kind of prongs, and on top of the prongs, I write AQ times AP, AQ times SP, AQ times SP, and SQ times SP. Now, what do these stand for? AQ stands for actual quantity, as in actual quantity of direct materials. So this is always going to be measured in kilograms or grams or pounds or liters or ounces. It's a unit of measure. AP is the actual price we paid per unit, so per kilogram in this case. Uh, SQ is the standard quantity, and SP is the standard price that we should have paid. So let's try to fill this in for our company, and I think by the end you'll have a pretty good measure of how to do variances. AQ, Bill's actual quantity of uh, uh, materials purchased. So he purchased 90 kilograms of beef. That's his AQ. So AQ is 90 kilograms. I can fill it in here too. 
because it's the same. Oh, I should note, the left prong is for direct materials purchased. The right prong is for direct materials used. I almost, uh, used, no, used. Uh, I almost filled in the right prong as 90 kilograms, but of course we used a different amount from what we purchased. So we purchased 90 kilograms. Our actual price we paid was $8.50 per kilogram. So if I multiply them through, you'll find I paid $765 for my direct materials that I purchased. Uh, 90 kilograms is still my actual quantity for the right hand prong my standard price here I gotta go up to my standards Bill said oh you know what it should cost me eight dollars per kilogram so my standard price is eight so 90 times eight is seven hundred and twenty dollars doing the math here we actually spent 765 if we paid our standard price we would have only spent 720 we're off by $45. These, are, these two numbers are $45 apart. This is a variance. This is a $45 variance. Now we've got to say, is this a good variance or a bad variance? But in accounting, we don't say good or bad. We say, is it favorable or unfavorable? Well, he should have paid $720 according to standards. He actually paid $765 according to what actually happened. This isn't good. He paid a little bit too much. This is an unfavorable variance variance and we call this the direct materials price variance moving over to quantity uh, uh, the direct materials used we want to figure out the actual quantity of material that he used he purchased 90 kilograms he had two kilograms left over so we can say okay he purchased 90 he had two left over he must have used 88 kilograms his standard price here, well, that didn't change. His standard price was and is $8 a kilogram. So he used 88 kilograms. The cost here was $8 a kilogram. I'm just going to erase that right a little lower. 88 times 8 is 704. Last, standard quantity times standard price. Well, the standard price remains $8. To figure out the standard quantity, we have to answer this question. Given the actual number of units produced, how much material should have been used? How much direct material ought to have been used? So given the fact that he made, I believe it was 400 burgers, how many kilograms of beef should he have used? So he did actually make 400 burgers. It should take 0 0.2 kilograms, so 400 times 0 0.2 means it should have taken 80 kilograms of beef. 80 kilograms times 8 bucks a kilogram is $640. So again, we're left with a position where we have two numbers. We want to figure out the difference, and the difference is $64. This difference, we've got to figure out, is this a good difference or a bad one? Is it favorable or unfavorable? And our answer here is, well, we uh, should have used 80 kilograms of ground beef. We used 88. We used too much ground beef, right? We should have used 80. We used 88. This might be good for our customers. They get a little bigger burger, but it's not good for our bottom line. We used too much beef, or maybe we just were wasteful. Maybe we were throwing some beef in the garbage that we weren't expecting to. This, in any event, is an unfavorable variance, and we call this the DM quantity variance, direct materials quantity variance. So how did we do? Well, sadly, and maybe not surprisingly, it was his first month in business. He had an unfavorable direct materials price variance, meaning he paid too much for his ground beef, and he used too much in making the burgers. Maybe he was a little more wasteful than he expected. Uh, maybe it was, you know, first month in business and, and uh, new staff, and you're training people on how to cook the burgers, but there might have been more waste than he thought. In our next video, we're going to look at labor, uh, well, we're going to look at material, labor, and overhead variances. Stay tuned.